Okay, in the last video, we moved the batteries over to this compartment right here. And I also put on the extra loom on all of the areas that have anything close to it for abrasion. I also put on caps that came with the Chins batteries. They're sending me a, another set for the first three that I bought last year. So that way those will have caps on them as well. Just an added protection, but you know, this area is still exposed. So not much you can do about it. You can get some large boots. They sell them for uh, Humvees, military style caps. I'm just not going that direction. I remounted the um, Bluetooth dongle right here and temperature. So we have two temperature points. Again, I don't remember which one is default. The one from Victron that's uh, hardwired in on the top of that negative terminal or if this one will be default. I need to check with Victron on which temperature sensor is default. Anyway, so batteries are moved out and over to that compartment. Now we're in this compartment, which is the electronics compartment. I've done previous videos on this already as far as description of what each of the solar items do, the power, the cables, the how everything is run. Um, I apologize if there's wind in the background. It is a little windy out today. This is where the three batteries used to sit right here. And uh, I wanted them to stay together, so I moved them to the other compartment and added three more. And had to reconfigure some of the cabling. The T-fuse that used to be here is now in the other compartment. And of course the disconnect's still in the same place. Uh, I will add the wire loom to these red ones as well to protect them. Uh, there is metal underneath this. If I ever get T-boned um, in a car accident, that would be pretty devastating and it may cause a problem, but uh, uh, it would probably pop the T-fuse in the other compartment. I can always disconnect it here as well to service or just to shut it down for winter. The other thing I did uh, in previous videos, I talked about the, the fuses that are in here and I uh, decided I'd put a light in here. So this and two more fuses. I put not only a light inside this compartment, I also wired up a cooling fan. So the light, I basically bought some uh, 3M double stick, uh, well, it's adhesive stick LED light strings. The wiring for that's this small stuff that goes up the roof. And then you can see that I have the strips of LED lights here. They go both directions. And just turning on this switch right here will turn on all the lights. So I have uh, visibility to replace any um, branch circuit type fuses in this box. If the main T-fuse goes out, then there's no lights at all. Then you're using a flashlight. Uh, so that's fused with a one amp fuse here and a two amp fuse for the cooling system. And this is thermal controlled. And I wasn't sure how I was gonna do that at first. I know that you can do some things with uh, the internals of Victron Energy has programmable relays. And I'm not sure if it would do something for internal heat temperature for fans or not, but what I did is I purchased a, uh, this is a 45 degree C thermal switch. It's normally open. So when it closes, it provides the ground for the cooling fan. And I also installed one up here on the top of the Victron Energy charge controller, solar controller. It's got a pretty good size heat sink, but this still gets hot. And so does this, this compartment gets pretty hot. I also bought some 40 degree C um, switches and that's why you see that I've got these um, where I can disconnect them and swap them out. So if the 40 degrees, if the 45 degree C is too high, which is about 113 Fahrenheit, and then I don't know, I haven't tested what the hysteresis is. So it turns on at 45 degrees C, where does it shut off at? Um, I did notice that the 40 degree C uh, switch turned on uh, fairly, I think that's 104 degrees Fahrenheit turns on and then it uh, um, shuts off closer to probably 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And so that fan may never shut off with that switch. 
anyways uh and to show you how that works i can just use a a uh, heat gun and point it at that thermal switch and when it gets hot it takes a little bit because it's sitting on the uh, metal heat sink of the pulling air out and on the other side of the inverter charger you can see some louvers right back in here against the wall so I installed cut a hole in that wall and installed louvers both on the inside here where you can see and I also did on the outside of the compartment the louvers have screens but not filters that'll help keep some dust out I may have to clean it with a vacuum every now and then um, this one has got a louver with a screen on the other side, keep bugs and things out. Uh, no kids play in here, so hopefully we don't get fingers. There, the thermal switch just cooled down and it shut off. I'm thinking about maybe putting some sort of a box over this fan and an air filter that I can change. This is a fan I purchased on Amazon. It's a computer cooling fan. I think it was IP67 water uh, resistant or waterproof. And uh, it's fairly quiet, that's full speed. I also thought of doing dual thermal switches on the side, one at 40 and one at 45, and then put a resistor in the one that's at 40. That would then minimize the draw of current and run this fan speed, maybe half speed and that would help um, uh, save batteries. I think it draws 0.75 amps right now, three quarters of an amp, so that isn't too bad. Uh, I went through all this once before, so I'm not gonna talk about it today, but this is the, the Lynx distributor. Oh, I've got it screwed down, so I can't pull that lid off. But uh, I'm gonna be relabeling. I've got labels um, to put on, like some of these other ones. You can see I've got labels. So now that I've changed the wiring around, I'm going to relabel everything and what the switch is, so on and so forth. And uh, in future, um, another phase that I'll do later on um, this year will be the Victron Energy Servo GX module. will attach in here. It'll connect into the VE CAN bus inside the Victron inverter charger and that will uh, provide um, all the data and programming uh, capabilities inside the motorhome on an LCD screen. So uh, that's it for now. I've got more to do, but uh, I've also got travel coming up. So this is done for now. So that's it in a nutshell.